Welcome to Amazing Business Radio with best-selling author and customer service and business expert, Shep Hyken. Shep will talk with some of the smartest thinkers in business to help make you more successful in your professional and personal life. This is Amazing Business Radio with Shep Hyken. Hello, everybody. It's Shep Hyken here. We are back with another episode of Amazing Business Radio. I'm excited to bring back my good friend, John DeJulius, who is an amazing entrepreneur and an amazing expert in the whole customer service experience world. And he just came out with another book, uh, and it is titled The Employee Experience Revolution. Increase morale, retain your workforce, and drive business growth. It just came out, and I urge you, if you are in a position of hiring and most importantly, keeping your employees, not only do you want to listen to this episode, but you also want to buy the book. Now, before we get into the interview, quick announcements. Uh, and they're simply this. If you've got an amazing story that you want to share with me, or you have a question that you'd like me to answer, just go to any of the social media channels and look for me. I am pretty much everywhere. If it is a question, use the hashtag uh, ask Shep, and I will answer the question right there in the social channel on this show in my newsletter or on my TV show, Be Amazing or Go Home. And episodes can be found on Apple TV, Amazon Prime. Just go to beamazing.tv and you can also binge watch all the episodes. I think you'll have fun listening, watching, and learning from some of the amazing guests that we have. But right now, we have John DeJulius in the house. John, welcome back on the show. Thanks, Shep. It's so good to be here and to see you. And, you know, you're amazing. Well, no, you're more amazing. So a couple of things. Uh, number one, um, new book. How many books now? Uh, this is number six. Number I'm, six. I'm, I'm trying to catch up, but I can't catch up to you because you don't you don't sleep. I, I think that means you've probably been on the show at least six times, I would imagine. <laughs> probably, pretty close to it. Probably. You may be the biggest repeat offender of amazing business radio that we have. But you know, you know, I'm I'm not only a friend, I consider you kindred spirit, brother, colleague. Um, you know, we have this mutual love and admiration for each other and each other's work. So like my brother from another oh, I mother, thought you were gonna say each other's are. wives. Um, because that's kind of true too. <laughs> okay. So hey man, here's the deal. Uh, first of all, thank you again for having me on the Customer Service Revolution amazing conference that you put on every year. Uh, that was my third time. And have yes. you had anybody do more than three times? No, you're the three-peat. You're the first uh, and only three-peat. Wow, I'm honored. And when's the next one going to be? Uh, we pause it for this year. So I, I think you know we're taking a year off and, and, and hopefully coming back in 25. All right. Will you let me know if I could support you in any way? I right. know I will. So right now, what we're here to talk about, though, is a really important book. And by the way, if, if you, I, I'm not going to go through John's huge bio, but he and I met many, many years ago. He comes out of a completely customer or client-focused or guest-focused type of business. He owned and still owns salons. But since that time, he's gone out and he's just shared with the world what made his salon successful and is able to adapt it to virtually any type of business. He builds the bridge from creating a great client experience in the salon industry to whatever your business is. And he's always focused on customers, customers, customers. But this book, and I love this book, is titled The Employee Experience Revolution. Uh, the last book was called The Customer Service Revolution. Uh, is that right? That was the very last one. Yes. Uh, no, the relationship, the relationship economy was in between. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. I, I stand corrected. Um, we may but have to you, edit you, that. You, you, no, you're right don't. where you're going. This is a you know a, a a sequel of the customer service revolution. Yep. But I like the relationship economy too. Uh, that was great. So anyway, normally I would go back and edit to make sure that I don't make any mistakes. But every once in a while, to err is human. So I'm going right, to go right. ahead and leave that one in. But anyway, the employee revolution, uh, experience revolution, I have been so focused since the 1980s on why companies don't spend more time on investing into what's called internal customer service, hence the employee experience. So why don't we just start with why do you feel that this concept is so important and how does it connect to the customer experience? Well, 
you know, Shep, as you know, uh, from being a speaker consultant in this world, uh, since the pandemic, uh, this has been more asked of us, or at least me, of our firm, uh, to help them with the employee experience more than the customer experience. And, um, you know, I think this is one of the silver linings of the pandemic. As everyone knows, from end of 2009 till, you know, questionably, you know, recently, we had one of the longest economic booms uh, ever. And and what happens when we have that? Leaders take their eye off the ball of the customer experience and of the employee experience. So I think the pandemic really sent leaders a wake-up call that we got to treat uh, our, our employees better, um, you know, and, 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 and in so many different ways. Um, you know, it, you can't separate a personal and professional life. And, you know, there, there's a quote, you know, or, or people say, you're not what you do. Um, and, and I disagree. Uh, when we go out, it, it, within the first 30 seconds, if we went out, we didn't know each other. And maybe our, our spouses brought us together. First, first couple questions are going to be, hey, what do you do? You know, hey, what do you do? You know, and you, you want to be proud of that. Uh, you want to you want to have a, a meaning and purpose. And I just think that uh, the, the, the silver lining of the pandemic was that the great resignation and quiet quitting, you know, sent us all um, leaders a, a message that we have to, you know, be better leaders. Yeah. And I, I think it's really what, what you're basically writing about is the culture of a company is a yes. major driver of the customer experience. And as a leader, we set the tone for what that culture is supposed to be. If uh, Yeah. Yeah. I, I've, I'm working with a client right now where um, we are doing a complete culture overhaul to their business. And uh, we've created their I, I don't remember what you call it. Uh, I think you call it the service promise. We call it the mantra, the one sentence. Customer experience action statement. That that's what I meant to say. The customer experience action statement. It's our version of a one sentence, uh, just a commitment. And here's what's crazy is that we're doing this for the entire company, thousands of employees, and somebody in our meeting where we have this program called Bring the Vision to Life um, said, "We don't believe our CEO is even aware of this meeting." And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, how could that possibly be? And uh, but it happens every once in a while. Leadership disconnects from what everybody's trying to create. Now, granted, they go, well, we empowered you to make this happen. We don't need to be on it. But no, I disagree. There are certain points at the very top where you've got to be on. If board. you don't you have executive understand. sponsorship, right? If you don't have executive sponsorship, this is a wasted investment. Yep. Yep. So and something uh, else, Shep. I know you you've experienced, and you know we. So our, our we we both have methodologies, right? Our methodology is the customer experience action statement first, then world class internal culture second, and you go down the, the line. And it, you know it was kind of a mistake what what we had had happen organically over the years, even pre pandemic, is we're doing the customer experience action statement and 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 all the things around you know changing the culture to be a customer obsessed culture, all that stuff. And I will tell you, I know you've had this happen uh, 50% of the time, a good 40% of the time, halfway through it, they love it, but they just say, stop. This will not work until we dress the internal. We're not taking care of the employee. And so this will not, you know, this is, will. the problem is that we'll have to keep on training you know, employees, new employees every 90 to 120 days because we're not keeping them. So as good as this is for the customer, if we don't start training them internally and make them feel this, right? Yep. I know you have this had happen. So, you know, it, it's got to start internally. Yeah, it starts internally. And not only that, every employee, and I mean every employee, has their place in the customer experience. If they're not supporting somebody, uh, ooh, they support directly the customer, they support somebody that does support the customer, or they're part of this process. And my favorite example of this, just to give you an idea, and I think this is where you head with all of this in your book, is that um, a flight, you take a flight, you check your bag, it goes down below, and somebody puts it on a cart, takes it out to the plane. There's five or six people that get involved in touching your bag but none of them ever see the passenger ever. 
And if they fail, right. they fail the passenger, even though they never see the passenger. And they fail the internal customer because that person in the baggage claim office, nobody ever goes into that office to say, hey, you guys are awesome. You've done a great job. Thanks for getting my bag here. No, they go into the office to complain. And they, you know, then they blame the guy at the office. You lost my bag. And really right. it was somebody else. But the point of this is, is that everybody's involved and, and you're 100% right. I don't know if you read some of the articles I've been writing about the employee hierarchy of needs and the customer hierarchy of needs as it relates to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And at the bottom of the pyramid, just like Maslow had, you know, you need food and water to survive. Well, in the employee experience, you need a paycheck compensation. That's at the base. That's like, okay, I'm going to get a job. Why do I need a job? Got to feed the kids send them to college, whatever. At the top is fulfillment. How you get to the pinnacle, to the top is very, very, I mean, it, it, this is what your book is about, is how you create fulfillment. And just like you want your customers to come back, you want your employees to come back tomorrow, next year, and the year after. At least most of how them. We, <laughs> yeah, yeah. How we define, we have a definition to everything. And, and the definition of the uh, at what an employee experience revolution is great companies help people live extraordinary lives and their leaders inspire employees to build lives of meaning and purpose. Exactly what you just said. Yeah. So let's do this. Let's take a real quick break. And when we come back, I want you to share with us the two biggest mistakes that companies make when it comes to hiring and staffing. Would you do that for us? I would love to chef. Awesome, though. That's what we're going to do. We are talking with my good friend, John DeJulius, who is the author of his, did you say sixth book, right? I did. I did. Six, The Employee Experience Revolution. Don't go away. We're coming right back. One of my favorite sayings is that customer service isn't a department. It's a philosophy. And it's a philosophy that must be embraced by everyone in the organization all the time. And that's 24-7. So if customer service is important to you, and I know it is, then you will love our virtual training, the ultimate on-demand customer service and experience training program that you can access anytime, anywhere. Now the course content applies to everyone, regardless of position and responsibility, from senior executives to the most recently hired and everyone in between. You'll discover tips, ideas, and strategies that won't cost your company a fortune, but will produce what I call moments of magic, those positive experiences, and it will happen at every level of your organization. So go to Customer Service VT. That's V as in virtual, T as in training. That's CustomerServiceVT.com. It's time to get customer focused. You're listening to Amazing Business Radio with best-selling author and customer service and business expert, Shep Hyken. We're back on Amazing Business Radio. We're talking to my friend, John DeJulius, about his latest book, The Employee Experience Revolution. And just before the break, I asked you, or actually told the audience, that you were going to share the two biggest mistakes companies make when it comes to staffing. So here's the question. What are they? Uh, so yeah, and I've been guilty of this too in my businesses. Uh, maybe you have, uh, the first one and and I'm coming off, uh, you know, the, the labor shortage, which I don't believe there's a labor shortage, Shep. I I think there's a turnover crisis, right? I don't think that there's not less human beings walking planet earth than there were five years ago, but the two biggest mistake that we've made in the past four years, most leaders, most companies is one. Hiring just anyone to replace, you know, turnover, right? Which is a a horrible mistake, but just as bad, maybe worse is looking the other way on poor performers, people with bad attitudes, because I need to replace 10 employees. All right. And I got this guy Shep, you know, in the warehouse or in the customer service call center or whatever it is, who, who isn't performing, has a bad attitude coming in five minutes late, yada, yada, yada. And I look the other way because I don't want to need to hire 12, 13. I got to hire 10. So we look the other way. And Shep, I had this leadership epiphany from all this, you know, that kept me up at night. So I'm sure you've heard this quote. Uh, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time yes. with, right? You've yes. said it to your kids. I know you have. I've said it at nauseum to my three boys. You are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And Shep, if, if, if Bo, my son, who you've met, if, if he is hanging out with, you know, five undesirables, who do we hold accountable to that? Bo, right? 
We're like, what are you doing? But here's my leadership epiphany. Our employees don't get to choose their five. We do as their leaders, as their bosses, as their owners. And when we hire just anyone, when we look the other way on the, you know, the poor performers, now what happens is when you have Cindy, who's a rock star, but we surround her with those poor performers, one of two things is going to happen to Cindy. A, hopefully for her, she gets hell out of there because we know rock stars hate working with C uh, plus or B minus players. But worse is if Cindy stays, she then gravitates to the five. And then we're saying, what the hell happened to Cindy? You know, she used to be great. Now she's not. And, and we blame her. And that really bothered me that it's my responsibility of who I surround my, my uh, you know, A players with. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. You put a, a superstar in the in the midst of some underachievers. Superstar can't do the job they've wanted to do. They don't get the su support, uh, you know, and, and I get it. Boy, that is, that's brilliant thinking. So at the end of the day, we got to start at the top. You're making decisions about who you hire. And also the importance of recognizing, uh, don't just hire somebody because you need to hire somebody. You've got to hire the right person. Uh, and speaking of hiring, you have something you refer to as the recruitment process, um, which uh, I think is chapter four in your book, page 57. Recruitment experience. Yes. Mm -hmm. And everything should be an experience, Shep, and, 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 and recruiting, onboarding, like everything's called, you know, experience. And unlike five, 10, 15 years ago, if, if someone was interviewing at a company or, or applying, they, they'd hear it's a great place to work. Maybe their friend worked. Maybe they were a customer. Their mom was a customer. they say, you should go work here. And so uh, they, they, they apply and they hope they get a call. They hope they get the job. Well, that was the old way. Now, most you know, candidates know it's an employee market, at least for the time being. They know it's an employee market. And so what are they going to do? They're going to interview and apply at five different companies, maybe five different industries, and see who offers them the best deal. Whatever to them is the best deal. That could be a dollar an hour more pay. That could be, you know, flexible schedule, work from home, evenings and weekends off, whatever it is to them. So they apply. So we want to create a recruitment experience. So when when you know Timmy or, or or Susan goes to the next interview, it pales in comparison. And and they and and they are so jazzed about the interview process with with our company, they don't even end up going on the next interview, right? Even though they didn't get the job offer yet, because we're not going to give it to them on the first interview. So that's what the recruitment experience looks like. And, 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 you know, if I, if I could go on, you know, obviously we want to do some great things that, that, you know, get them pumped up, tell them about the rags to riches that, you know, Shep, you're interviewing for, you know, the front desk receptionist or, or this or this. I just want to let you know, Denise, did this, you know, when she started today, she's a partner of a managing partner. So this isn't a temporary transitional job. But the other things is um, that I, I love is making your interview process ungameable. Um, I know if I come to interview with you, Shep, you're going to, a typical interview, you're going to say, hey, John, tell me about your two biggest drawbacks, right? And I'm going to think and ponder. And then I have my answer ready. Shep, I am a workaholic and a perfectionist. Bam, I nailed that, right? Because that's usually what people get asked. So the best interview process is when people don't know what they're being judged on. And, and, and I can give you a couple of examples. One is, and I've learned this from Southwest and, and the Ritz. One is, instead of spending six hours on six employees, on the first interview, they interview all six at the same time. And, and they'll say, hey, you know, tell us a time when you went above and beyond for a customer, or whatever the question is. And the interviewee candidate thinks they're being judged on who has the best answer, right? And what they're really being judged on is what are they doing when they're not answering? You know, so, 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 so Cindy may be answering and I'm peeking at my Apple watch to see if I've gotten any message or I'm trying to just think of, oh, well, how can I one up her answer? But but maybe Shep, who's in the interview, is looking at Cindy, smiling and, and laughing at something funny she said, and that's what they're looking at. You're you're engaged. You're making her feel good about the inner, you know, what she's saying. That's what's really being looked at. 
Wow, that's brilliant. So uh, you said something a moment ago. Um, I, I wrote it down, and I'm looking at some of my notes here. The um, In the recruitment experience, I want to go back to that. What is it that you're creating in that recruitment experience that's different enough? Because you mentioned you pretty want to sep- much separate yourselves from right. other recruitment experiences that other companies may have. And chances are they don't even have a recruitment experience. But tell me an example of some of the things that uh, you recommend doing that does start to separate you so you wouldn't want to consider the next interview with the company that you have because you hope you get this job. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, you know, when they walk in that we know them, that the receptionist knows them, that there's a welcome sign, you know, uh, that, that says it, um, that whoever they come in contact with before the interview is saying, oh, I understand that you just graduated from Maryland University. What was that like? The receptionist is doing that or, you know, um, offering them, you know, you know, just a tour or little things, but making them feel good and making sure that, you know, it, it, what I talk about is knowing their Ford F-O-R-D, family, occupation, recreation, and dreams. Um, yeah, doing things like that and then, you know, tying it to to what their job is going to be, um, you know, tying the overall, you, you just mentioned it, um, tying the overall purpose to the company that, listen, you may be loading trucks for UPS in the middle of the night. And that's a hard job. But you have to understand, you know, how that affects the driver. And the customer who's receiving that package. Yeah, that's that person underground who's dropping the bag onto the cart. And, exactly, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So they see that you know there's meaning and purpose to it. Yeah, I think that's such an important part of of any job. Is is you know, it's kind of like you said it. We're in a market where it really is the employees who've got the upper hand right now. Uh, so what are we going to do to attract them? Now, how about buyer's remorse, um, if you will? I'm an employee. You give me this great experience. I get in there. I'd love to talk about that because so many times, if you think about it, uh, my friend, Dr. Larry Baker had a saying. Larry passed away many years ago, but I loved his line, the most abused customers, the sold customer. We work so hard to get them to buy from us. And once they become a customer, we move on to the next one that hasn't yet bought from us, thereby neglecting the people that are now buying from us. And and uh, I would imagine some of that happens in the employee experience as well. Yeah. You know, I just read it for the first time in Joy Coleman's new book. Oh, what a great um, Never book. Lose yeah. an, Yes. Never to lose an employee again. And boy, was I embarrassed when I read it because of how guilty we are of this. He, it, so, so this is transitioning now from the empl- uh, recruitment experience to the onboarding experience. And he talks about hires remorse. So think about it. You know, you have five different offers. Everyone's, you know, wants you because they need people and you choose a job with me. And this is young Shep who's going to be starting at a, a front level customer facing position. And so we, this is exactly what we're guilty of. We say, all right, Shep, um, you know, it's, 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 uh, the, you know, middle of May and, uh, you'll start June 1st. Um, so report, you know, at this location on June 1st and, and, and Denise is going to be your supervisor and just, you know, ask for her and she'll get you all started. Well, then we, that's it, you know, and then we wait for you to come in June 1st. And sometimes we don't know. Denise didn't know you were coming in June 1st. And oh, she's no. like, how can I help you? Right. And you're like, I'm chef. I'm ready to change the world. And she's like, oh. and she's kind of frustrated and, and because she wasn't prepared. She doesn't have your computer. But not only that, what, what Joey talks about, which, which is really good that we don't, is what happens between May 15th and June 1st. Right. Um, are we sending you how excited we are? You get in a video from John, the your, your leader or, or the owner saying, Chef, I'm, I'm John. Uh, you know, I, I founded this company. I'm so excited uh, that you're going to be joining our team. You know, and then what happens when you walk in? And, I, I, you know, I think he gave, you know, some really good experiences of, you know, how, how they you start at 10. Everyone else starts at nine so they can, you know, just do different things and have things on your desk and, you know, walk up and say, hey, Shep, I'm Jeremy. 
You know, I'm just a coworker, but I, I'm so excited. I heard you're from St. Louis. I heard you like hockey. So it's that hire's remorse because all of a sudden, you know, now other offers start trickling in in that two week period. And you're like, oh, I wonder if I should take that job. And, you know, you kind of get crickets from the company that just hired right, you. Right. Well, I, I mean, that's the whole point. You know, Joey's first book, uh, you know, Never Lose a Customer. Never again. Lose a Customer again. Yeah. And now it's Never Lose an Employee again. So many of the, and we're going to wrap this up by simply saying so many of the techniques that are in your book, if you swapped out the word customer for employee with a little right. bit of editing, the book would be almost the same. Chef, that's all I did. This book took me like 15 minutes to exactly. write. Exactly. You know, you're brilliant. Search and find. Yeah. <laughs> Search and replace. Search and replace. <laughs> no, but you it's just, the you truth. Just, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, know, you, you are. You're a hundred percent you know, uh, truthful. And it's like, love asking people, you know, who, who has a customer in here? And some, some departments don't raise their hand and it goes back to what we were talking about. You know, they don't have a customer. Well, you know, that's shame on leadership to allow someone to think they don't have a customer. Right. Right. All right. We're Marketing down to the final has question. A customer. Sorry. 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 If okay. You could give me the one nugget we haven't talked about yet out of this book. What would that be? Yeah, well, that, that's really putting me on the uh, spot. And here, I right? warned that's, you, I guess, you've been on the show like five I times. Know. How could you not know this I, question? <laughs> well, because it's like, you know, it's like telling me which kid do I, do I, if I have to leave a kid home uh, from my vacation, which one am I going to leave? And I know sometimes that's easy, leave. right? <laughs> But we can't say it on the air. <laughs> it's which one is driving me crazy or costing me the most money right now. Um, you know, a shop, I think, I, I, I don't know. I, I really can't, you know, um, creating a, an, uh, an employee experience that retains them. So after the 90 days, what are we doing to, to uh, make sure that, um, you know, uh, we, we build a moat? around our rock stars. So, you know, the offers that, you know, you throw at, at my employees or I throw at your employees, you know, they, they, they're not listening, right? That, that, that they feel so good uh, about who they work for um, and, and, and where they're going and be that type of leader that, you know, someone says, you know, you changed the course of my life, right? You, you provided more meeting. Uh, let me end with a quote here, Shep. Um, you know, it, 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 it's impossible to separate one's professional life from one's personal. And if employees are miserable at work, in a to toxic environment, their overall happiness will be impacted. Um, so, you know, a, 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 according to Pew Research Center, when asked what factors lead to a fulfilling life, surprisingly, the majority surveyed say, said job satisfaction was most important. Um, that's, you know, I, 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 that's kind of a stretch for me. I, I think it's important, but hopefully, you know, the, 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 the partner we choose, the, the, Kids we have, if we choose to have kids, would be higher than that. But it just shows you uh, how important because because we spend so much time at work, right? I think that's the point. We spend so much time at work. When we get home, we may be lucky if we spend two thirds of that time with our kids and our our spouses or significant others or the people right. we love. So uh, well done. Again, I, I love all of the books that you have from the very first one, Secret Service, to wow, you the know one that, that we have I didn't now, even know the that. Yeah. Experience Revolution. So if you have not checked out this book, it is well worth your time and effort. Uh, John, as always, I love you like a brother. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you, Shep. And, and as I said last year, and I, I, I want to cut that video up, how I introduced you. At last, at last October's customer service revolution, um, no one's done more for my professional career than you. And I called you up before I'd ever probably stepped on a stage or read a book. And I just said, hi, hi you don't know me. I just wanted to ask you a few questions. And you couldn't have been more generous. You said, slow down. I have all the time you want. And you've just been amazing, uh, a, a human being to me. And I've got to where I was. 10 times quicker because of the, uh, wow. the, wow. the grace you've shown me. Well, thank you, brother. I mean, uh, you know, first of all, we, we do care about each other and I think we're both naturally, uh, people that, that care about each other. So, and we see people who are, who have success potential and you just love to see them grow and grow. And to me, you know, many people have said, hey, can I pay you for helping me? I go, no, you want to know what I want to see? 
I want to see how much better you are six months from now than you are today yeah. based on something yeah. we talked about today. And that to me is the biggest payback of anything. And by the way, you have done this, you know, you've got the Royal flush going here. Uh, it's, it's hard to beat that because you have gone from the single speech to building a team of consultants to training the annual conference that you've done. I mean, you've done amazing things. And now all the books that you've written, the employee experience revolution. That's the one you got to buy today. We're going to wrap it all up. And I'm just going to say thanks everybody for tuning in next week. We will have another amazing interview. And until that time, this is Shep Hyken reminding you to always be amazing.